Spike will have to detour. Something must be wrong. You're right, brother. This is a stick-up. Throw down that bag. How'd you like it? Judging from the motions, must have been mighty pretty. I'm sorry I couldn't have heard it. You sure do all right with your lip reading, Boots. Gosh, I ought to. I've been practicing all my life. John, you know this part of Wyoming sheep range. What makes you think so? I might be deaf, but I ain't dumb. And what's more, my smeller ain't crippled. When the morning breeze wafts the smell of sheep, since I don't have to hear them, You carry everything in that hat band of yours, don't you, Booch? Yep, it's hanging there in a pocket. <laughs> well, son, I reckon you'll be glad to see your mall. I sure will, Booch. Fifteen years is a long time. You know, my folks died when I was a yearling. You haven't talked much about it, but from what I gather, I don't reckon your childhood was any too pleasant either. No, it wasn't, Booch. My dad died when I was a little shaver. My mother married again, a fellow named Hendricks. He kicked me around so much that I shoved off on my own. A ranch. I always figured mother was never very happy with this Hendricks. So I went back to get her. I found out they had moved. I spent years trying to locate her, Booch. And just a month ago, I found out that Hendricks had died and that she was alone. So I'm on my way to get her and take her home with me. And I reckon we'd better get started. There's two of them. Keep your hardware ready. 
And don't you gum this up. Let them pass. And when their backs are toward us, I'll sing out the orders. Be a heap easier to let them have it now, wouldn't it? You ain't got the brains of a fly. We gotta make sure who they are before we dust them. Kootenay got a tip that a marshal was coming this way, riding a Palomino horse. And I reckon that's him. The pal's deaf. He didn't hear you. Yeah? Well, maybe this will stop him. We got reinforcements. They've got us in the trap. Come on. Where are they? Right down that draw. I never saw such a darn country where people started shooting at each other for no dad burn reason. Looks like our reinforcements hit bad. Come on, Booch. Lamar. John. Booch, I want you to meet Lamar Blythe, my old trail boss. Howdy, Booch. Howdy. Well, I reckon I picked the right side to be on. Was that the Kootenai gang we were shooting with? I'm darned if I know. Those three Umbrees trail jumped us just as you showed up. What are you doing in this part of the country? I'm a lawman now, working on the Kootenai gang. Mail robbers. <laughs> I kind of had my suspicions about you two and been trailing you for hours. Drilled you right through the bone. You're going to be laid up for quite a spell, Lamar. Just my luck. Nice reward, too, on them fellas. Chance for a promotion. Now look at me. Well, you got one of them, that's something. You'd press that fella, John. I'd like to find out if he's one of Kootenay's gang. Give your friend a shot of this mule, King. <laughs> We've got to get you to bed and then wrestle the doctor. Remember that wagon we passed down the way? I'll go down there and get it. As fast as you can, Booch. Have another shot of this. I'm gonna work on that leg a bit. I trade the doggone leg. If I could just hang my rope on them two crooks. Well, don't worry about them. I'll take after them and crawl them for you if I can. Say, that's an idea. Here, you take my badge. I'll swear you in as special deputy. Fine. I'm glad to do it for you, Lamar. He was one of the Kootenai gang, all right. I found the tag to the mail pouch in his pocket. Good work, John. Get on the trail. Take good care of him, Manuel. I'll be back as soon as I can. Booch, I'm going to use his name so he can collect that reward. Well, I reckon from now on, you're alias John Law.
Hell? What happened? Where's Rusty? Dead. We run into a whole army, Kootenai. How many times have I told you not to call me Kootenai around here? If these lazy dollar cowboys heard it, it would spoil everything. Come inside. Well then, Rico, spill it. What happened? Well, I was laying on a trail out waiting for the marshal on his white horse. But he had another fellow riding with him. We stuck him up, but he had a whole posse following him. Posse cut loose on us and killed Rusty. We hightailed it, but not till after we wing one of the posse. Ain't that so, Sammy? So you let the marshal get away, did you? Couldn't fight a whole posse, could we? You probably killed the biggest chance that any of us ever had for making some big money. I don't see why you're so anxious to get your hands on this scrubby ranch, Kootenai. This scrubby ranch, as you call it, is worth $75,000 cash. If that marshal doesn't gum up my plans. 75,000 bucks? <laughs> That's a lot of money. That beats sticking up stages. How are you going to get it? When we held up that stage, I found a letter notifying the heir to this measly lazy dollar ranch to come and claim it. The letter said that oil had been struck on the adjoining land and for him to hurry and claim it. That the Western Oil Company had made a cash offer of $75,000 for the lease. Gosh, that's a heap of money. I took that letter, made my claim and got away with it. As soon as the property's turned over to me, I'll lease it to this oil company, get the money and blow the country. Nice brain work, Kootenai. But what about the real heir to this lazy dollar? What if he's to show up? Not a chance. Didn't I steal a letter telling him to come? Besides, he ain't never been in these parts. So you be careful about calling me Kootenai around here. the marshal and his pal. Now's a chance to nail both of them. Put that gun away. We can't kill them here and have these call hands as witnesses. I'll go out and stall them. You stay here. Howdy, strangers. Would you like to have a feed? Thanks, but we're in a hurry. Where's the nearest doctor? Well, what's the matter? Busted leg. We ran into a stick-up back yonder and a friend of ours got shot. That's too bad. Any idea who these fellows were? Might have been some of the Kootenai gang. You haven't seen any strangers around here, have you? Come to think of it, I did see a couple of fellows streaking into that canyon up yonder. They acted as if they was in a powerful hurry. Boots, you fetch that doctor. I'm trailing those two riders. Oh, forget it. I'll send one of my men. Say your name was? His name's Lamar Blythe. Hurry and get that doctor up to Manuel's camp before a friend kicks out on us. I'll attend to it right away. You might overtake those fellows if you hurry. Well, thanks. I'm giving you one more chance. I've set them up Wild Horse Canyon. You two follow them, and this time, don't fail me. You understand? When they find the bodies, one of them will be the marshals, and these letters will identify the other fellow as me. And the law will stop following us, and I'll have no interference in this land deal. You got brains, Kootenai. But what about that fellow at the sheep camp? Forget him. Get going.
It's easy. They're splitting. We'll take old Whiskers first. And Clark. Huh. That might be interesting to Courtney. done for. The marshal's next. Putin can't crab out us this time, can he? He certainly can't. We're getting what he sent us for. It's knocked out. Well, what happened, Boots? Two of Kootenay's men shot me down. It sure did. How do you know they were Kootenay men? Because they said that Kootenai sent them over here at... Where'd you go, Boots? Just up the canyon. You stay right here. You sure made quick work of it. This fella you got, Kootenai? No. Just one of his chicken livered gunmen. The other fella got away. It's not too late to track him down if you could turn this somebody over to the sheriff for us. Sure. I'll turn him over to the sheriff. Well, here's his gun. Tell him that Marshal Blythe wants him jailed on a federal charge of mail robbery. Right. Oh, so say. Did this fella happen to mention anything about Kootenai? Oh, yes. Yeah. Sure did. He told his pal that if Kootenai hoped to get away with it, they'd have to wipe us out. You needn't worry about this fellow, Marshal. I'll take care of him. Where you been? Trailing them in. I had to hide till the marshal left. So you fell down on the job again, eh? Well, let me explain. You talk too much. I never said nothing they could hear. No? Then how does it happen that they know that I wanted them wiped out? I don't know. I just whispered, didn't I? So you admit it, eh? You know I told you what would happen if you crossed me again. You're not going to turn me over the sheriff, are you? If you do, I'll spill everything. Don't worry, Rico. I'm not going to turn you over to any sheriff. 
That fellow sure covered his tracks, Pooch. But we might run across him here in town. What in the world are you doing here? Teaching school. I've been here almost a year. It's sure good to see you. I want you to meet a sidekick of mine, Mr. Collins. Booch, this is Miss Ballin. How do you do, Mr. Collins? Pleased to meet you, miss. Well, while you two are powwowing, I'll go water the horses. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Booch. Come on, sit down and tell me all about yourself. What are you doing here? Oh, I've come to see my mother. I haven't seen her in 15 years. It'll be a big surprise. Maybe you know her. Mrs. Clark? No, I don't think I know anyone by that name. Well, Clark is my last name, not mother's. She married a fellow named Hendrix. Hendrix? Oh. Yes, I, I knew a Mrs. Hendrix. Mm. But, but she... You don't mean that? Yes. Three months ago. She had a little ranch called the Lazy Dollar. It wasn't... I intended to make things a lot easier for her, Joey. But couldn't something? My brother. Yes, every... I want... He's trying to swindle me out of my right. I won't need it. Had it coming to him, the double crosser. That's all right, Kootenay. You don't need to worry about me. Here's a letter that Rico forgot to give you. One of them dropped it during the fight. Well, this letter is addressed to Everett Tarkington Clark. We've got to work fast, Simmy, if I'm going to sell that ranch. But what about my cut? Don't worry. I'll cut you in if you don't bottle it. Howdy, Sheriff. Howdy, Mr. Clark. Sheriff, Marshal Blythe left a prisoner in my charge to be delivered to you. As I was bringing him to town this afternoon, he resisted me. Tried to get away, and I had to finish him. Hmm. Of course, I'm not expecting any trouble. The Marshal wrote me he was coming through the Chiral. As soon as he shows up and okays it, you can forget it. Thanks, Sheriff. Lease all drawn up and seventy five thousand in cash as you requested. Fine.
court is now in session. Now in the matter of the probate of the last will and testament of the late Anna Hendricks. Are the principals ready? We're all here, Your Honor. <clears throat> Having examined the documents in proof of heirship and found them satisfactory, the court will enter an order declaring one Everett Tarkington Clark to be the sole heir. And just a minute, Your Honor. Well, what is it? That man isn't the heir to the lazy dollar. Someone's trying to put over a crooked deal. Oh. Here, order. Order! Sheriff! Sheriff, where are you? Here. Well, will you please keep order in this court? Now, young fella, do you know that you can be punished for contempt of court? I don't care if you'll put me in jail for the rest of my life. That lizard's a swindler and I can prove it. Well, you realize what this young man is saying? Order! I'm the rightful heir to the lazy dollar. Sit down. The court will hear what you have to say. Get this. No gunplay till I give the word. They haven't got a ghost of a chance of proving anything. What's your name, young man? Uh, John Clark. Oh? Well, that is, I mean to say, uh, my real name is Everett Tarkington Clark. Oh, that is, you mean to say that you claim to be the Henry heir? I don't claim to be anything, Your Honor. I am the heir. What proof have you to support your claim? My friends here will swear that I'm Clark. Hmm. That'll be all for the present. You are dismissed, young man. Young lady, come forward, please. Place your left hand on the book. The right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth except the gun? I do. Sit down. Are you acquainted with the claimant? Well, I've known John for a long time. John? He claims his name is Everett Tarkington Clark. It is. John is just his nickname. Oh. Did you ever hear anyone call him Everett Tarkington Clark? Well, uh, no. I can't say that I have. Then how do you know his name is? Ever talking to Clark? Why, Your Honor, he told me so. Oh, he told you so, did he? When? Oh, about an hour ago. Before or after he learned about the estate? Well, um, afterwards, I guess. Huh. If that old rooster don't do right by you, I'll shoot his tail fast. Previous to an hour ago, did he ever mention to you the existence of the late Mrs. Hendricks, whom he now claims was his mother? No, no, Your Honor, I... I ah. don't think I did. Hmm. That will be all, Miss Bellin. Next witness, rise and swear. What kind of swearing do you prefer, Judge? You'll have to excuse him, Your Honor. He can't hear. He knows what you're saying by reading your lips. Go up and give your testimony. Oh. Raise your right hand. Well, that's my gun hand, Judge. You can't trick me into taking my gun hand out of reaching distance. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth help you God? I do. Sit down. What is your name? Oh, this don't be formal, Judge. Just call me Boots, like that's what all the rest of the boys do. Are you acquainted with the claimant? Who, John? He's my pal. Have you ever heard him called Edward Tarkington Clark? Have I? Why, the foreman used to... Say, Everett Tarkington Clark, old top, will you hustle them heifers down to the Brandon fire? And it was Everett and Tarkington Clark this and Clarkett and Tiverton Dark that. Clark, Clark? What do 
you trying to do, Bart me? <laughs> oh, I get you, Judge. I must have shuffled them names up for a call deal. That is all. Or excuse. Thanks, Judge. If you decide this case all right, meet me out to court and we'll hoist a little snort. That is all, Mr. Booch. You have heard the testimony of your witnesses. Have you any other evidence to produce in support of your claim? I had a letter from my mother, Your Honor, but uh, I must have lost it. But please, Your Honor, I see no cause for further delay. A big business deal hinges on the prompt settlement of my estate. Prove it. Who'd have thunk it? That dad burned stink lizard. If you can show this man to be an imposter, by all means proceed. He told me this morning he was United States Marshal Blythe. And if you search him, you'll find he's wearing a marshal's badge. Sure, I'm wearing a badge. And I have a perfect right to wear it. Do you claim to be Tark, heir to the Daisy Luller? Or am I the Marshal? I mean, or, uh, Blythe the Marshal. Or Blythe the Marshal. <laughs> Well, I'm John Clark, acting on orders from my friend Blight. That's why I'm wearing it. How do I know you have legal authority to wear that badge? Sheriff, this man is the man your custody on the charge of impersonating an officer. Take that badge away from him. One minute, Judge. This man is not only a fraud trying to do an honest man out of his rights, but he's a fugitive mail robber, the Kootenai Kid. He showed up at my ranch this morning and told of a gunfight he'd had. He probably killed the marshal and took that badge off his body. I just got a report that the body of a man with a bullet in his skull was found up near the rim. I sent my deputy up to investigate and he ain't back yet. Your Honor, that man's lying. Marshal Blythe is wounded. He's lying up in the sheep camp. He'll tell you who I am. He sent me after Kootenai. Order. <clears throat> This is not the trial of a criminal case, but the settlement of a probate matter. This man is guilty of impersonating an officer, which is sufficient cause to hold him for the federal authorities. But, Your Honor, please, give me a chance to prove that I'm the legal heir to the lazy dollar. In the matter now before the court, the first claimant shall be recognized as the lawful heir to the Hendricks estate. In view of the evidence just presented, it is the opinion of the court that the second claimant has no legal standing. Congratulations, Mr. Clark. We can't let him get away with this, John. But what are we going to do, Boots? Suppose we run across to the Wells Oil Company. You go, Wagner, and tell them we'll be there shortly. You say the cash is ready? Yes. Well, it shouldn't take long. Don't worry, John. Marshal Blythe, he can explain everything. Where is he? I'll go and get him. That's about the only chance we'd have. You'll find him at the sheep ranch up on the rim. You better take a doctor with you. All right, I'll do it. And I'll bring him if I can. What are you waiting for? Come on. Let's get that dough. I want two birds in jail first. It'll give us more time. But what about that fellow Blythe up at the sheep camp? He'll spill the whole thing. Can you tell what they're saying, Booch? Wait a minute, partner. I'm getting lots of information. So you see, Simmy, when we leave Manuel's camp, I don't think that Marshal Blythe will be in a condition to do any talking. What is the next case on the docket? Order. Your Honor. Sheriff, remove those men from the courtroom. Well, Simmy, he wanted to play marshal. Now we can talk to the sheriff for a while. Come on. Let's go. 
<clears throat> now listen, old timer. If what you say is true, you'll have a chance to prove it. You can just come along with me. But Sheriff, those men that just left here have threatened to do away with Marshal Blythe. My partner just heard them. What, heard him clear across the courtroom? Oh, no, he didn't hear them, but he could tell what they were saying by reading their lips. Well, if he can read my mind, maybe he can tell you I'm going to put you two birds in jail. Sheriff, I told you once before to take these two men into custody. Come on, folks. Come on, folks. Wait a minute. Watch out. Them two fellas just broke away from the sheriff. He's after him with a posse. Come on, Simmy. We'll join up with that posse. We ain't gonna join up with that posse, are we? Not until Mr. Blythe. Hello, Miss Joanne. How's the wounded man? Delirious as a hoot owl. Don't worry, Miss Bellin. I'll get him out of this. Kootenay. Go on. Best man with a gun. Next to uh, Kootenay. He's always talking about Kootenay. He must be one of the gang. Oh, no, he isn't. You don't understand. got here ahead of us, and there's the law. We'd better let well enough alone and get out of here while they're getting good.
Thomas Blythe. He's delirious. It'll be hours before he can talk. They were going to lock us up, but we got away. Oh, then you shouldn't have come here. There's a deputy in camp. Look. I wonder who they are. It's that claim jumping gent and his gun slinging pal. What are they saying, Booch? The argument about us dissatisfied. The claim jumper threatens to give him nothing. John! The little fella just called him Kootenay. Kootenay? Joanne, that claim jumper is Kootenay. We're going after him. You can't double-cross me, Kootenay. I'm taking you back to town, and I'm spilling the whole works. They'll let me state's evidence. I'll put you at the end of a rope where you belong. I'm not trying to double-cross you, Simmy. I told you you'd get yours. Now, if you don't mind, I'll make a cigarette. Stay here with him, Booch. I'm going after Kootenay. Where's them outlaw friends of yours? Those outlaws, as you call them, just went after Kootenay the mail robber. They went over that way. You're just in time, Sheriff. This critter wants to talk. And from what I gather, it's powerful and important. Yeah, and from what I can gather, you've got a lot of explaining to do, too. He's Kootenay, all right. He murdered Rico. And now, now he's done me in. He found a letter addressed to the real Clark. And Knightley robbed the mail. That's what gave him the idea to steal the ranch. Uh, Here, you want to sign this? Sure. Steady my hand. All right, old timer. You take care of him.
You boys circle around the rocks. They're here someplace. Kootenai, Sheriff. If you can get him out of there, you'll find that mail robbery evidence. That won't be necessary, Mr. Clark. And I guess I can pin this badge back on you. Come on, Booch. What are they saying? Come on. Tell us what it's all about. What is it? Come on, Boots, what is it? Yeah, what is it? Come on, tell us, tell us. Don't stare, bad doggy. <laughs> I'll never tell on a pal. Gotta tell you this much. There's going to be a wedding ride soon. <laughs> <laughs>